Good evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Even though we've been in this room many, many times in the last several weeks, this is the first regular one in a while. Uh, so everybody welcome who's in the audience. Um, I would ask the audience to please turn off their cell phones uh, to off because they interfere with the radio frequency on our microphone systems of the TV. And uh, after that, I'll ask the Secretary to call the roll. Okay. President Wasserman? Here. Vice President Baker is absent. Secretary Kaminsky, I'm here. Treasurer Brandstand? Here. Member Gordon? Here. Member McFarland? Here. And Member Vanderkelly? Here. Six out of seven. Six out of seven. Thank you. We have more than a quorum. Uh, the first agenda item tonight is the consent agenda. I will just briefly outline what the items are, and they're in the agendas that are published in the hallway. Uh, approval of our regular meeting minutes and the special meeting minutes from the several superintendent uh, interview situations we did. Uh, bids have been accepted uh, for the district uh, concrete replacement plan that is outlined in some of our prior meetings. Bids have been accepted for the Plymouth Elementary Ruth replacement, which we've talked about in prior meetings. And additionally, bids have been accepted and tabulation provided <coughs> for a Midland High School varsity baseball field scoreboard. The work to be reformed includes the purchase and installation of a new scoreboard and removal and disposal of the old scoreboard. The project is scheduled to be completed before the start of school this fall. The administration recommends issuing a purchase order to Dactronics for $14,892. And more importantly, support for this project is provided by Meyer, the Michigan Baseball Foundation, the Midland High Varsity, and the Midland High Varsity Club. And thanks to those folks. Uh, insulation will then be donated by Blazy Electric of Midland, and thanks to Blazy. Uh, we have uh, three staff resignations uh, effective with the dates that are listed, and we have a uh, $4,018.50 bill to the Thrun Law Firm. Do I have a motion for accept? Uh, is there a motion first? I'll move to adopt consent agenda, I consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.6 as written. Support. Moved by Member McFarland, support by Treasurer Brandstadt. Any questions uh, or deletions or additions you'd like to make, and you can remove if you do have a deletion to make. Just a thanks to how creative um, the effort is and uh, for the scoreboard for the baseball field has really a, a great uh, uh, collaboration between the community and, and the donation of installation by Blazy Electric. So that's very much appreciated to keep that there for the kids and the athletics. Any others? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it. At this point in our agenda, uh, anyone who would like to address the board is, is free to do so. We have no pre-requests. Uh, if anybody out in the audience would like to, we'd like to ask you to limit your time to five minutes so others have a chance to speak and if, uh, tell us what uh, district you, which school district you are within the MPS. No takers? We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, the first item is uh, approval of summer tax rate, and so I just turn it right over to Mrs. Klein. Uh, yes, it is officially made to a resolution that will need to be read. I'll keep the details for the meeting. Uh, but you have to certify by June 1st that the tax rate that you will be levied this summer on the property of the school district within the city of Midland. Um, the We break our tax levy into two components. In the summer, we levy within the city only. And then during the winter, we levy the remaining half of the amount in the city and the full amount in the townships. This is not at all connected with the state levy of the state education tax, which I believe is done in full in the summer. But this is our separate levy. So if you read the resolution, you'll see the amounts for non-PRE property and PRE, reminder, that's principal residence exemption. And these are the rates that we will send to Mr. Lynch, city manager, tomorrow, asking that the city council take action and put them on the July 1st tax bills. I do have a resolution to read. Uh, certification <coughs> of summer taxes for 2013. Whereas this Board of Education was authorized by the electors of Midland Public Schools on May 3rd, 2005, to assess up to 18 mils of taxable valuation of the school district for 10 years, 2006 to 2015, 
with the general operating fund subject to the limitations of Article 9, Section 31 of the Michigan Constitution of 1963 as amended. And whereas Section 1211 of the revised school code as amended provides that the Board of Education of the school district may levy 18 mills of the taxable valuation of non-homestead property within the school district for school operating purposes and exempts principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial personal property for, from such levy. And whereas Section 1210 of the revised school code as amended further provides that if the foundation allowance of the school district calculated under Section 20 of the State School Aid Act for the 1994-5 uh, state fiscal year was more than $6,500 per pupil, such school district may reduce the number of mills from which principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forests, industrial personal, and commercial personal property are exempted by up to the number of mills as certified by the Michigan Department of Treasury required for the school district's combined state and local revenue per membership pupil for the school fiscal year ending 1995 to equal the school district's foundation allowance for the state fiscal year ending 1995 and may be levy uh, and may levy the number of mills in succeeding years for school operating purposes on principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forests, industrial personal and commercial personal property subject to certain limitations and whereas the supplemental millage rate applicable to pr principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forests, industrial personal and commercial personal property of the Midland Public Schools for the 1994-95 fiscal year was certified by the Michigan Department of Treasury as 5.6523 mills and whereas the Midland Public Schools has taken the action required by section 1613 of the revised school code as amended to conduct a summer tax levy for 2013 and communicated such action to the City of Midland by letter dated November 13, 2012. And whereas Public Act 38 of 1999 uh, being MCLA 1211.39 uh, requires that millage rate assessments will be rounded down to four decimal places. It's only half a page on, on the second page. <laughs> okay, so page two. Now, therefore, be it resolved that there be spread on the 2013 summer tax roll on tax levy on the taxable value of non-homestead property of the school district within the city of Midland of nine mills for the general operating fund and resolve further that there be spread on the 2013 summer tax roll a tax levy on the taxable value of per principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forest, industrial personal and commercial personal property of the school district within the city of Midland of one mill for the general operating fund and resolve further that there is spread on the 2013 summer tax roll a tax levy on the reasonable taxable value on the taxable value of commercial personal property of, of the school district within the city of Midland of three mills for the general operating fund and now therefore be it resolved that if the revenues produced by the above levies for the operating purposes result in revenues exceeding or falling short of the limit specified in section 1210 or 1211 of the revised school code as, re as amended, such difference shall be made up in the school district's next regular tax levy in accordance with such section. And finally, uh, resolve further that the city, the clerk of the city of Midland be and hereby authorized <coughs> and is instructed on behalf of Midland Public Schools to assess and spread the amounts and only those amounts required by the above mills on the 2013 tax roll, uh, summer tax roll. Mr. One correction in paragraph three, just because we have to technically get this right. It okay. says, whereas section 1211, no. these things are not easy to read, so this yeah. is not meant <laughs> no. to be critical. Been there. <laughs> but Dr. Kaminsky said 1210, that should be oh. 1211. Oh, look. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the correction. Yeah. Everybody Other duly, than that, perfect. Duly notes yeah. the correction. Um, I'll take a motion to support the resolution. Moved by Treasurer Branstad and support by Member Gordon. Um, any discussion or questions? We have to take a roll call vote on this resolution. So, okay. President Mr. Wasserman? Secretary. Yes. Uh, Vice President Baker is absent. Um, Treasurer Branstad? Yes. Secretary Kaminsky? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. Member uh, Vanderkellen? Yes. And 
Um, my memory is going, Member Gordon. Yes. Right off the top of my head. Okay. okay. We have a 6 0 vote. Majority rules. The resolution passes. Thank you. Thanks for the extensive reading. Yes. Been yes. there, and uh, I understand. It, it, it was a bit of a task, but part of our board business. <laughs> Town criers have gone out of style, so there's not much training in that field. <laughs> Um, that moves us on to curriculum instruction, and the first thing we have is a uh, sub uh, study committee minutes, and Yvonne will be subbing for Lynn. The curriculum and special services study committee met on Monday, April 15th at the Franklin Center. Randy Shadig shared with the committee that the final draft of the next generation science standards were finally released in early April. Michigan was one of 26 lead states involved in the development of these standards, so it is expected that they will be adopted by the State Board of Education as early as mid-May. These standards represent a significant shift in how science will be taught and assessed. The standards are fewer in number to provide students with the opportunities to go in deeper in topics, and they also reflect an increased focus on the practices of science and engineering. Testing on the new standards is expected to begin in the spring of 2017, with 2013-14 being a year of transition planning and implementing some of the practices in science and engineering that students will be expected to master. <coughs> Randy showed, us the, showed the committee an example of one science kit that is sent out to K-6 teachers in the district. The kits are pre-packed with all the materials, activity instructions, background information, and books so that all kindergarten through sixth grade staff have all the resources they need to conduct those hands-on activities that are essential to student engagement and learning. Each teacher receives three to four kits every year, depending on the grade level, which are aligned with current state content expectations. Currently, first grade teachers are preparing their incubators for the arrival of their dozen eggs so their students can watch their development as they eventually hatch into chicks. And of course, this was a month ago. <coughs> Members then toured the, toured the science Resources Center to see where kits are packed and restocked with materials for the next time they will be used. While touring the Science Resources Center, the group also looked in on the rooms used by the district robotics team. The team is led by DHS teacher Sean Murray and several adult mentors. They've had a very successful season and qualified for the state tournament held the previous weekend at Eastern Michigan University. As a result of their performance this year, the team qualified to compete in the Robotics World Championship in St. Louis April 24th through 26th. At that time, they were making their arrangements for their trip. They're, of course, they're back now. The challenge for this year was to construct a mobile robot that could throw a Frisbee with accuracy and also do a chin-up. <coughs> we have one meeting left. This committee has one meeting left for this year. It'll be May 20. Uh, that's next Monday at the Building Trades House on East Haley Street. Thank you. Any questions of Yvonne? Okay, moving on, I'll hand it over to Dr. Elson. This evening, we also have uh, some books to present to you for the 28-day period of examination. <coughs> the books are available at my office in case anyone would like to look at them. They are a book for IB Math Studies SL and for Psychology A, IB AP Psychology SL, and also our brand new calculus class, the AB Calculus for 11th and 12th grade. We'll need to have a new book for that class. Thank you. That's for information only. Correct. We'll move on to finance, <coughs> and uh, we have an FFO committee meeting from Ms. Branstad. Yes, we met last Tuesday um, afternoon, and the first thing and majority of our time was spent discussing the format of the budget workshop, which we actually just held prior to this meeting. Um, at this time, last week, and it's still that way, there are still three revenue scenarios that um, were presented for the state school aid act um, so you get the governor's proposal right now you have the house's proposal and you have the senate's proposal and we spent a lot of time looking at how each of those would affect um, the revenue that we would have for the district next year um, in all three cases the revenue will be less because of declining enrollment um, forecasted expenditures will reflect staffing teachers using the existing ratios with options for reducing class size to be presented Administration will recommend that we reduce administrative FTE by one rather than two, and that the second FTE be shifted to addressing increasing needs within the special education department. The 2013-14 budget will be presented at the June 10th Board of Education meeting with action to be taken on June 24th. Another thing we discussed was the um, 
that they're currently a two-year agreement with the Midland Community Center to maintain the two middle school pools and that expires at the end of this school year. <coughs> Mr. Ellinger and Mr. Verlindi discuss options and the interest that the community center has in keeping the pools open into the indefinite future. So Mr. Verlindi will meet with a representative from the community center to negotiate a new agreement. And our next meeting will be, uh, really? Tuesday, September 3rd. We, did we say <laughs> we were going to do one in June? Tonight? Possibly one in June. I don't think we have one scheduled in June. Oh. Right now, scheduled. Yeah, I think September. there is. I think there's uh, one that I, s I saw on the calendar. Hmm. Wasn't it? We will we will resolve that, and uh, and we may have to, as, as we saw tonight. <coughs> okay, um, moving on to the rest of finance. I'll hand it back to Mrs. Klein. We have a number of gifts this evening. Those that have been processed total fourteen thousand eight hundred thirty-eight dollars and thirty-six cents. Donors are the Home Builders Association of Midland County, providing support for the Building Trades Program, Seabird Elementary PTO, providing two-way radios and the necessary batteries, Jefferson Parent Advisory Committal, commi uh, Committee uh, has purchased Science Olympiad t-shirts for the participants, the Barbara and Robert Stoppert Recognition Endowment Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation, Supported providing core state standards for Chestnut Hill Elementary. And just a little background there. Mrs. Stoppert was a teacher at Chestnut Hill. Mr. Stoppert was well known in the athletic community. And so a number of years ago, there was a fund established in their name. And a portion of it was dedicated for each of their interests. So there's a Stoppert Award that supports athletics. And then there's a Stoppert Award that's de dedicated specifically to something at Chestnut Hill. <coughs> we had the H.H. Dow High School Athletic Booster Club purchasing computers and software to run at the MHSAA track events. Dorothy O. Minical Business Education Endowment Fund, also at the Midland Area Community Foundation, provided support for BPA and DECA events. And Mrs. Minical was department chair uh, at, I believe, Midland High School a number of years ago. Michigan Baseball Foundation, as you saw, has donated, this is money for Dow High School and Seabird Elementary PTO earbuds, and then a, di a gift that requires board action is also from Seabird in the total of $5,950, and it is to purchase a PA system in the gymnasium and do the necessary electrical work. So we would request your approval on that item. First, thanks to all the donors, but second, I'll accept a motion for uh, <coughs> 6.2, the final item on the uh, Seabird School PTO donation. I'll move to accept the Seabird School PTA, or PTO donation. Support. Moved by Member Crown, <coughs> supported by Member Gordon. Any questions or comments? Thank Seen you. It? Thank you very much. Big thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll move into a vote on that item. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? guys have it thank you very much for the donation <coughs> move on to human resources and <coughs> we have an item for action and I'll turn this over to mr. Berlindi. thank you every spring we bring this to you um, as a, a condition of the uh, contract with the MCA for many years we've had an arrangement where uh, the president of the MCA is um, is released from the classroom on a lease so that she can perform her duties as the MCA president. But um, all costs of salary and benefits, all costs associated with her employment are paid for by the MCEA. So this is each year um, uh, taking that arrangement and making it legitimate for the next year by releasing her from her assignment and setting up that lease agreement. Make a motion. I move we support. Seven point one. Seven point one. Support. Moved by Treasurer Branstad and support by Secretary. Secretary Kaminsky. Um, any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. And for information, we have uh, two items. Staff members who have announced their retirement, effective as of the date indicated. Christine Kleiken, paraprofessional Woodcrest on June 12th. Monty Mondeau, 
bus driver transportation June 12th and Don Sauve paraprofessional at HH Dow also on June 12th and the board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to the families of Mrs. Dorothy Bartow who passed away on April 17th Mrs. Bartow was a food service worker for Midland Public Schools for 15 years retiring in 1990 and also Mrs. Ann Marine who passed away on April 19th 2013 she taught at Midland Public Schools for 18 years uh, 19 years retiring in 1983 she was uh, a recipient of the Gerstecker Award <coughs> for Excellence in Teaching in 1982 and of course you are very familiar with that ceremony our sympathies to their families uh, moving on in the agenda, you will notice there's a couple of items of correspondence to and from the Board of Education you can reference. Also, schedule of our future <coughs> upcoming meetings. Um, uh, not And listen, at the bottom of that list of meetings that may be of interest to folks are the finalist interviews next week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, followed up by a meeting uh, for board selection of the final candidate. Um, any other? We now move to study discussion. I don't know where I started last time, so Kim, I'll start with you. Oh, um, I had an idea. I thought it would be nice if we said the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of our meetings to honor the soldiers and just to show that we're here for a bigger cause. And do I have anybody? Um, we, we not. Why don't we do that in <coughs> motion so we can have the discussion? So go ahead and do a motion so we have the discussion. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I Go ahead. move that we <coughs> say the pledge, pledge of allegiance before Before the meeting? Yeah. I'll second that. I, I will too. Yeah, I think it's a okay. great idea. Now let's have discussion. Um, Scott, you I think it's a great idea. I think the pledge is something that's lost in schools, personally. Yep. And I've got no problem at all saying the pledge before we start. Kudos to you for bringing that up. Yep. Has, that ever, has the board ever done that in the past? In, in my history, <coughs> no. Uh, we'll have to see if we can get one of the donated flags we could put in the room. Oh, it's right behind Thank me. You. Thank you. <laughs> Don't have to get a donated flag. Um, it's not uncommon. I, uh, the yes, district I came from did it. Um, yeah. That's how they started at every meeting. I think it's a great idea. I, I, when we had how many meetings ago was it where they came in? Exactly. It's an outstanding idea. Any other comments? We can move into into a vote. And Cindy, I'll have you inserted into the agenda. Um, all in favor of. Uh, we do have motion of Ms. Vander Callen's motion on saying the Pledge of Allegiance before the start of all of our meetings. Say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. We will do that. Um, Yvonne. I don't have anything. I think I'm kind of on information overload, so I just have to <laughs> kind of digest things for a little bit. But I, I do want to say that I'm always impressed with the gifts that the Midland Public Schools receive. That's just overwhelming. So thank you to all the groups and individuals who donated. <coughs> okay. I, I had an opportunity to be one of the speakers at the Gerstecker Awards uh, this week. And uh, I've seen them on TV, but I've never experienced them in person. And uh, it, was, it was really an honor to go beyond the presentation, but also to participate on the committee with looking at the award winners. And looking at the letter of uh, recommendations or the the letters that were sent in for the, the candidates was, was really <coughs> impressive, and uh, the the amount of uh, uh, the the amount of influence that that those uh, candidates made on imp impact on, st on students' lives, but also a lot of those candidates um, serve as mentors to a lot of our teachers. And it was really it was really neat uh, from a board member's perspective to look at that process and how teachers uh, look at. Uh, rating each other and how they look to each other for support and uh, mentorship and I learned a lot with that I thought it was a really neat experience and uh, to see the surprise on the teachers faces when they did not know that they were being uh, given that award um, and their families hid away and their family in a lot of times has gone from out of state to uh, to be there for that that teachers award um, and it was hard to hold back tears myself with how neat it was to hear them uh, talk about they didn't expect to receive it. Um, a lot of them had said that they, uh, they they didn't know they didn't they didn't really feel prepared to uh, to give a presentation to the public. They just talked to their class. They talked best to their class and their students. Um, and a lot of them have said that uh, 
that they just do what they should, day in and day out teaching in the classroom, and they didn't expect to receive an award for, for doing what they thought was everyday excellence in Midland Public Schools. It just really is a neat experience. And thanks to all the, all the, uh, the donors uh, to Midland Public Schools, the scoreboard, the donation of time for the installation, and the gifts from all the PTOs <coughs> and all the different organizations, the foundations and so forth. It really is impressive. Yeah. All right. Are you all from Midland High? We didn't have a chance beforehand to talk to anybody because we were in a meeting. Saw a thumbs up in there somewhere. All right. <laughs> well, I have some Chemex shirts, so I was assuming. Are you here for a government class? or? Yeah. Well, welcome, and I don't know how you knew to come to this one. <laughs> this is going to be a very short meeting compared to what we have been having. So um, welcome very much. And um, yeah, I think we, we've spent a lot of time together with all the um, candidate interviews for superintendent. It's gone very well. It's um, exciting to see um, the people that we have and that um, next week. You all don't know, we will be interviewing um, more extensively three candidates and hopefully um, from that pool choosing one. Um, there's that and um, other than that, I can't believe the school year is almost over. My kids are counting the days, so <laughs> yeah, keep studying. <laughs> That's it. Scott. I am uh, looking forward to the graduation. Uh, we just got our graduation assignments um, today. so. This will be the first one that I will have had the opportunity to participate in. So I think that's going to be refreshing, especially after being entrenched in, the, in our superintendent search, uh, which has been really intense the last couple weeks. Um, but I'm looking forward to the interviews, the final round of interviews next week. Um, it, it was nice to get back into, a, I think, a regular business meeting um, for what seemed like forever since <laughs> we've been back here. Um, other than that, thank you to all our donors. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. It's, it's really nice to see a, uh, a full audience. Um, and that's all I have. I'll pass it on to Jerry. Back to me. Uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I will repeat some things that people said, but with a little different twist. Um, the interview process has been interesting, and they're on TV. They're also on the Internet. I extend the invitation to the public to look at those. And uh, please give us feedback as we go along. Uh, it's our decision ultimately, but it's also interesting to hear different perspectives as we go along. Um, hats, thanks to all the donors tonight, but also to the Gerstacker family for their continuing support of the Gerstacker Awards. And I'd like to point out Lisa Gerstacker as she continues to come back almost every year to be at that event. And that's very nice to have the family there uh, carrying on the, the, the tradition uh, of the Gerstacker family. Um, and lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the millage election. Thanks for all those who came out to vote. Uh, while we're disappointed with those results, we will try to understand uh, what you're trying to tell us with those votes and, uh, and go forward. Um, hopefully, uh, it's not an indication of, of uh, support in our community for public education, but more in line of maybe what some of the priorities were, et cetera. We will learn that as we go forward. So again, thanks for all who came out to vote. I'll be uh, brief as well, where we've been sitting here since 4 o'clock this afternoon. Um, yes, the board members have your assignments for the uh, two respective high school graduations. For those of you who have a child in high school, we tried to set you up so you could be at the high school of your graduate when they become a senior. I think in the case of some of you, that's three or four years away. So we try to alternate. And that way you can show your support in both high schools. So. We hope you enjoy that. It really is the best part of your job, I think, job. is what people have said. I actually have some um, recognition for students. And for all I know, perhaps uh, one or two of you are out in the audience here. So I'm going to launch right into this. Um, at Midland High School, congratulations to Justin Tenbush. He took first place in his arc welding category at a recent Delta College Technical Solutions competition. Also, the Midland High School Focus newspaper Won many awards at the annual spring conference and awards ceremony hosted by the Michigan Interscholastic Press Association. That was held back on April the 15th. Focus journalists took home 38 individual awards in various categories, which is a brand new record for the high school. The Focus staff also won the Spartan Award for Journalistic Excellence, the highest award a paper can win at the state level. This was the uh, Focus's uh, 21st Spartan Award. Only a handful of papers in the state received the Spartan Award each year. Uh, Midland High School was one of 14 schools that received the award out of 69 schools that applied. 
With the 38 awards uh, in the Spartan, this was one of the most successful MIPA award ceremonies in Focus history. At Dow High School, congratulations to their update and yearbook staff on their outstanding recognition at the spring MIPA conference also. The update staff earned a gold for its print publication, a bronze for the online publication, and the yearbook earned a silver. Individually, they placed in 31 categories. Northeast Middle School, congratulations goes to them. The Northeast head-to-head -head team had completed another successful season. This year's head-to-head -head team consisted of 98 Northeast students. That's a high number. These members worked hard to complete another undefeated season. Of the 98 students, 57 of them qualified to attend the head-to-head -head finals meet to compete in 83 categories. The finals meet, um, um, the finals uh, competition had top, top scoring students from seven middle schools. When the final scores were calculated, 13 Northeast students took first place, 14 students came in second place, and 11 students took third. So congratulations to all the head-to-head -head members. Uh, also at Dow High School on March 21st, 15 staff members of the Dow High Update traveled with an advisor, Cami Hall, to New York City to be recognized as a finalist for a crown award from the Columbia Scholastic Press Association. The update was one of 48 high school newspapers nation, nationwide and the only high school in Michigan to be a finalist. The staff earned a silver crown for their work on the publication. Additionally, individual awards known as gold circles were received by student staff members. Congratulations to all of these very impressive young journalists. Sticking at Dow High, the DECA students competed in mid-April at the annual international competition in Anaheim, California. 16,500 students competed for a chance to earn the honor of international winner. Um, Vikram Shankar received a medal for his occupational test. Billy Schutte earned the honor of top 10 in his event category. And this means that Billy Schutte is in the top 10 marketing students in the entire world. Congratulations to all who qualified for the competition and those that earned further honors. Back to Midland High. In late April, the Midland High School of Meister Singers traveled to St. Louis, Missouri. We said we have no money as a district, right? <laughs> <laughs> to compete in a music competition. They swept the awards, winning first place in the high school mixed choir category with superior ratings, winning best high school choir overall, and winning outstanding soloist for Gracie Potter. Congratulations, Meister Singers. And then one last, couple last items. Um, we want to give a salute out to Mrs. Lombardo for winning the Michigan Youth's Art Festival Touchtone Award for 213. And then also at Midland High to Kellen Bixler, Emily Marinen, and Joe Reeves, who finished third at the inaugural MSU programming competition this past weekend. And then National Honor Society students at Midland High will mention this because you're all here. Do you know how many food items you took in through your food drives all year? Come on, take a guess. Uh, no? Uh, nice to think you know you think highly of yourself. They took in over 4,000 food items through their food service drives uh, this year, as well as giving many hours to community service activities. So you know what? Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> and that's it, Mr. Watson. That's it. Well, Carl, that was a great recap of our students. Uh, with that, uh, if there's nothing else for the good of the order, we will stand adjourned. <laughs> Come forth and receive thy signatures. Oh, yeah.